Hi guys, welcome back to another Scientific Monday. Today it's time. NASA finally, finally released its peer-reviewed EM drive paper. This is huge news, but I have not been able to read through it properly yet because I got to it to the article through Scientific Alert, which posted this article on the 19th of November in the weekend when I was gone. So I found it, but I had really little time to read through it properly, so I'm going to mess it up probably. But this is huge news, really huge news for the scientific world. Because the EM drive is something that is theorized since 1999 and has been made before by some people without sci real scientific background or real idea of how it works. And we still don't know how it works, but NASA made one themselves, they tested it, they tested it thoroughly, they made a paper about it, the paper has been reviewed by experts, they approved it, and it's here, it's real. The scientific rules as we know it have been not really complete it seems. So let me explain a little bit first about the EM drive. Let's see, let's play. Uh, this thing here you see, the huge copper tube, so to say, that's the basic internal of the EM drive. The, the whole system has been brought in a device that sucks vacuum, removing all the air up from its surroundings. And the interesting thing is, it was theorized that by bouncing back and forth mi microwaves and radio waves inside the copper tube here, that you get pro that you're able to propel something which is really weird because the only way to propel something that we know is through ne Newton's third law you need to accelerate the force on a first body that acts on the second body and the second body acts back that's kind of like how rockets work but I'm not going to follow in that stuff right now because we're like 30 minutes before the release of this video and I still have to do everything of it. Alright, so this is the whole device that's... It looks really janky, I admit that, but it is just a test model. It's really as simple as you get it. And they, it works. It has the propulsion of... It propels forward with one 0.6 mini newtons I thought let's look no, I don't think I can't even type properly uh, let's look to the article quickly that's as long e awaited EM drive paper has finally been reviewed and published it shows impossible propulsion system that does not work this appears to work on theory, on paper, it's impossible. In practice, it works. So the NASA EOS lab laboratory team has put forward a hypothesis on for how it could produce the trust, the something that seems impossible ac according to our current understanding of laws of physics, especially Newton's third law in this case. Uh, first, uh, by Rodia Sawyer back in 1999. Instead, right. Instead of using heavy, inefficient rocket fuel like our rockets use these days, it bounces back and forth microwaves inside a cone-shaped metal cavity that to generate thrust. So that's basically this copper device that we see. Inside that, the microwaves bounce back and forth, and that somehow creates thrust. Apparently, I don't get myself, but. It appears to be possible. I'm still amazed by it and don't know what to think exactly. So according to original e calculations, it could be so efficient that it could power it could be used to bring us to Mars within 70 days. Uh, the small problem, it defies Newton's third law, which states that everything must have equal opposite reaction. So let me get it. Um, to, uh, how am I going to say this? <laughs> I don't know. I'm barely awake actually. 
So it states that everything must be, have an equal reaction, but on the other side with which with you interact, there is the same reaction in the opposite direction. So according to the law, for a system to produce trust, it has to push something in out the other way. Get it? So rockets push out their fuel in a fl highly fl flaming form to produce the trust. But this closed device doesn't push out anything. It just bounces back and forth microwaves within itself and that produces trust. That doesn't make sense to the way that I've been taught the how physics work. It's weird. But yeah. Yet in test after test it continues to work. Last year NASA's EagleWorks laboratory team got their hands on an EM drive to try to figure out once and for all what's go the hell is going on with this thing. So it has been made before. For example the one of Roger Shaw, back in 1999. In the meantime, someone else tried to reproduce it and succeeded. Uh, China did it, I think, and there was another company, I'm not sure. At least another team also did it. So there were at least four, four cases that it seems to work. And this one from NASA is the first one that's been peer reviewed and approved by those peers. So yes, it's real. How does it work? We don't know. We really don't know. That's really scary, <laughs> so to say. Knowing science your whole life, alright, but then something comes out that destroys your knowledge and apparently something else is possible. That's weird. So the, propel the strength of the propulsion is like 1.2 millinewtons per kilowatt thrust in a vacuum. It's been tested multiple times. They got the same number constantly. And to put the 1.2 millinewtons per kilowatt in comparison with traditional rockets, those put like the health thruster. Look at it. Dang it. Do we have one, Google? Please show me. Something like this, which is a much more traditional rocket because it relies on emission. But this one doesn't. It produces 60 million millinewtons per kilowatt. That's 60 times as much as the EM drive. But the hell hell thruster requires propellants and weighs more when you launch it compared to the EM drive, which constantly has the same weight. How the hell is it possible? No idea. Light cells on the other hand, something else that's getting popularity these days because it doesn't need a propellant. They only generate 6.67 .6 micronewtons per kilowatt. That's less than what we have with the EM drive. And the ma most amazing thing is, I, f I personally find amazing that this is only a prototype of the EM drive and that it can be made more efficient, work better and maybe even get better trust than the hard thruster. Who knows? So if we find out how it exactly works, we get find out how we can improve it. So apparently this supports the pilot wave theory of quantum mechanics, but not something I'm familiar with. I'm more known with the Copenhagen interpretation, which says, which basically says, if you don't see it, it isn't there. But if you see it, you know what it is exactly is. So apparently, the pilot wave theory on the alt suggests that particles do have precise positions all the times. But in order for this case, this to be the case, the world must also be work in other ways that we aren't sure of how it works. It's really controversial actually this paper. So along with the article we got the full paper to look at and holy crap it's complicated. I did a quick 
look through it and try to get an idea of how it works but I don't I have no idea it's nearly how can I say out of my not just out of my comfort zone it's also above above the difficulty that I can handle quickly I would need like a few weeks I think to read through it properly work out the numbers and think of the possibilities for it that are realistic but I don't have the time for that sadly so from the article this image is the like I said before the device itself and it looks sloppy but that's what you get when you let scientists do something that they don't know how it works you get this but hopefully NASA is able to work it out properly now and get something awesome out of it so I think I'm going to keep it at this right now because I don't know what else to say about it I'm amazed I'm flabbergasted I'm blown away by it I'm silent I'm waiting for more so to say so if you like this video like it if you want something to say like how crappy it was comment down below dislikes are also welcome subscribe if you want to stay up to date with my videos and thank you for watching see you guys next time